a happy new year from uh, Queensland, Australia. We're on our way back from an amazing folk music festival. So we started the morning feeling a little bit gritty in the bathroom and uh, as we were washing our faces and brushing our teeth, the woman rocked in in her bikini, 8 a.m., drinking a beer, a little bird bath in the, in the uh, sink. And, you know, even on New Year's Eve day, uh, knocking back a beer at 8 a.m. isn't normal behavior. It's not really healthy behavior. It is behavior I 100% know about. I've missed a lot of holidays in my life because I was loaded or uh, trying to get white ways and means to get more or locked in the bathroom instead of being at the party or with my family or enjoying the music performance or just dreading the actual holiday because it would make it harder for me to get whatever it was I needed at the time to try to numb out. So my heart goes out to the woman with the bikini and the beer at 8 a.m. And I just wanted to pop this quick video up to wish you a very happy new year if that feels a little bit close to home for your experience as well. When we're locked in our bad habits and addictions, holidays can seem like a full on excuse to just give into it and kind of have a social pass on the way we eat, the way we drink, the way we use. But when we know we're out of balance in our relationship with those things, we know it. And we know we're just using this excuse and digging our own hole deeper, right? I've come to the end of the year uh, with nothing to count for it before besides how much money I spent on addictions or uh, how much weight, you know, what the whole sum total of my year being, being figured by weight gain or weight loss. Um, just a really empty way of looking at life. So I want to suggest a couple things today if it feels like you're caught there. One is that we do have a negativity bias in our mind, which means that when we look back at last year, we're going to pick out the negative. We're going to look at it and say, wow, that was a crap year. That's a natural feature of most of our minds, unless we're actively counterbalancing it. So I just want to challenge that story a little bit for myself and invite you to do it. Last year might not have just been a crap year. There may have been, um, there may have been a few bright spots. So even, even if you can just find a few of them, a few little moments, um, I think that's important to do so that we're not painting an entire year with too broad a brush. Because when we do that and when we hold on too tight to that definition of a year, not only do we miss being able to celebrate the good moments, but it locks us into the definition of what's going to come ahead of us too and it limits our possibilities. So whether you're the kind of person who then will look forward at next year and say, I'm going to beat my food addiction next year for good. I'm going to stop drinking on January 1st forever. So you have sort of that optimistic idealism or if it's just feeling pretty desolate and bleak inside your experience right now and you're like, I think next year is going to be just like this and I'm going to eat and drink and smoke and whatever my way through it just in this tremendous amount of pain and it's not going to get any better. So we have more of that negative sort of slant to our idealism about it. Locking on to those fixed ideas of what it's going to be like doesn't leave very much room to, to have choice and freedom and be surprised by things. So when we're struggling with our habits and struggling with our addictions, it is so important to leave that little bit of room for choice and change and freedom and also to have it be balanced with some reality and practicality. So a beautiful way to do that besides reflecting on a more nuanced picture of the year that passed is to look at where we are right this moment and just generate as much self-compassion as we can. It is hard 
to be at um, a joyous moment marking the transition between one decade to the next decade and to feel like we're stuck and trapped in behavior that doesn't work for us and that hurts us and that may even be damaging and hurting the people around us. That's really hard. And the fact that we've made it this long and that we're sitting here on New Year's Eve or New Year's Eve day and even thinking about, wow, could I try to change this? That is a testament to our strength and resilience. And we can both be really compassionate to ourselves for how hard the journey is. Like, wow, in some ways it was a really hard year. I really disappointed and let myself down. But in this moment, I can try to be really caring and tender to myself about that fact and know that I did the very best I could. And there's a lot of pain here. And even if I don't have any true empathy toward it right now, maybe I could learn to be empathetic for the amount of pain this person is carrying, this person who happens to be me. And I might even be able to find a little glimmering, a little inkling of celebrating or at least acknowledging the strength and resilience that we carry, that we've gotten this far and that we're still trying. That's awesome. And then looking forward into next year, I would encourage you, I know many people are scarred from New Year's resolutions, they won't do them at all, and that's completely understandable. Um, but I want to encourage you to cultivate a little, a little spark of intention, a place to incline your mind toward how you'd like to be next year. Like a really positive statement, not something you want to achieve, not, I want to, not binge for all of January. That could happen, that's great, it's a good thing to add on, but the, the real intention that has power is when we're cultivating a sense of um, internal qualities that we want to grow and amplify within ourselves. So maybe that's like, I wanna really take care of my physical body next year. And from there, from that kind of big picture, we could break it down into specific things we wanna do. I really encourage you to choose things you want to do, not things you don't want to do. I don't want to drink. I don't want to binge eat. Um, those are fine in their way, but the research shows and my experience backs up, it's much more powerful to put our attention toward what we do want to grow and cultivate rather than what we want to stop doing. That leaves a vacuum. So uh, what do I want to grow and cultivate going forward? more compassion for myself for how hard this journey has been, more ability to, um, to choose other ways to take care of myself before I turn to my addiction, build a little bit more space in between me and my addictive behavior. That would be a huge win for so many of us uh, if we could really do that. And it doesn't feel as scary as saying, I'm never gonna drink again. I'm never gonna binge eat again. In fact, I'll just give up sugar and never have a cookie again in my life. That feels pretty scary for a lot of us. So thinking about a reasonable, manageable step you could put into that New Year's intention, what's the value we hold, caring for us, ourselves better, becoming healthier people in body, in spirit, in mind. Those are the kinds of values we wanna cultivate. What are the specific steps we can take to make it happen? I would love to hear what's on your mind, this New Year's turning point. What habits are you struggling with that you want to make or break going forward? And what are you doing to just take a little bit of care of yourself in a really uh, true way that feels good for you at this turn of the year? Thank you so much. I'm wishing all of the addicts, all of the binge eaters, all of the alcoholics out there everyone with a bad habit. I'm wishing you especially a very, very wonderful new year and the wish that it could be a turning point toward uh, cultivating more of the qualities you want in your life next year. Thank you.